me control all them boys from Kansas City where they know we got them tricks. We get it how we live and know we. Hey, hey guys, it's Tyler back, professional goalkeeper, a member of T Goalie Remy. Today we're going to be teaching you how to be a goalkeeper. So this is for people who are just hopping into goal, extremely inexperienced, maybe you want to try it out, maybe your Sunday league team is forcing you to play because your keeper got injured. But this is really just a crash course. Just be going over some basic topics with you guys and we're going to be going into a lot more depth with a ton more videos on the channel in the near future. This is just for all of you guys who've decided that playing in the field is a bit too easy for you and you want to play something that requires actual skill and really <laughs> test yourself. That's what we're going to do. Okay, so the first form of distribution we're going over is the back pass. So this is used when your defender has the ball with their back towards the attacking goal and they're facing you. They're probably under pressure. So they're just trying to relieve that pressure by passing the ball back to you. So the first thing you want to do before you're going to receive a back pass is just peek over to the right side because pretty much every time you get a pass, you want to switch. If it's coming from the left, you want to switch it to the right. That's where the open space is going to be. And vice versa, if it's coming from the right, you want to switch it to the left. You always want to find the open space and move the ball away from where all the attackers are. Secondly, you want to show out of your goal. You don't want to be receiving a back pass where the pass is coming straight to you and the goal is right behind you because that way if you're playing on a crappy field, if you just have a bad touch, it's going to go into the goal and that's going to be a bad one to concede versus if you have a bad touch out here, worst case is it goes out for a corner kick, which is not ideal, but it's still fine. So the ball is going to come in. Your first touch, it's going to be out to where you want to play it and then you just put it back across the field. And that's all it is. All right, so one more thing with the back passes and whenever you're distributing as a goalkeeper, especially if you don't have a lot of experience, is you wanna play it safe at all costs. If you're under pressure, just hit it one touch as far as you can, out and wide, and just really relieve that pressure. You don't wanna get stuck trying to do anything cute, trying to, of course you wanna maintain possession if possible, but if it's an iffy ball or you're not fully confident you're gonna be able to hit that ball, just hit it out. Because you'd much rather would take a throw in and have your team be able to sit back and organize versus a quick counter where everyone's kind of out of position and it's just gonna be odd numbers against you and your defenders, which will not end well. So, as of course, you always wanna call for the ball back. You say ball, and say man's coming in really hot. You just, just spank it out. That's all you need to do. All right, so now we're gonna be working with distribution out of our hands. So the first technique we're gonna be going over is the bowling technique. And this is usually used when the, your defenders are maybe 10, 15 yards away from you. It's just a quick, easy way to get them the ball. And you're almost, it's just exactly like bowling, except you're gonna drop down a little bit lower. And the point is to release the ball right above the turf so that it doesn't have any bounce to it. You want the ball to just stay along the ground the whole way there. And you wanna be playing it, aiming for their outside foot. So if it's a left back, you wanna hit their left foot so then they can open up and face the entire field to have more options. If you put it on their right while they're facing you, it's on their right and they can't see anything behind them. And if they're under pressure, all they can do is pass it back to you. If that striker pushes through also, then you just have to hit it long and there's a good chance your team loses possession. So, if you have your target just about 10, 15 yards away, you're just gonna go down and just bullet and just the ball just staying right along the ground to their left foot give them some direction tell them to turn if they have time if you put the ball and they're under pressure which really you shouldn't be giving the ball in that situation anyways call for it back and you can swing it or hit it out right, so the next form of distribution we're going over is a javelin throw so this is used when say there's a attacker in between you and the defender you want to throw to so you got to put it over their head or you want to start a quick counter with somebody say 35 40 yards away if you're good at it and if not, you can start, you still use it when someone's 20, 25 away and just practice will just, in technique, is gonna make your distance increase over time. So it's given the name the javelin throw for a very specific reason. It's because it's exactly like throwing a javelin. Where to start, you're gonna have this arm is gonna stay straight the entire time. So throughout the whole process, you don't wanna bend your elbow at all. That's where I see a lot of kids start to go wrong with this technique, is they wanna start bending their elbow and throwing it more like a football. So you have your arm straight and you have your lead arm up and this is gonna be aiming where you're actually throwing the ball. So whoever you're throwing the ball to, this arm should be leading directly to them. And it's like a pendulum. As you step into it, as this arm goes down, this arm comes up and you just, exactly what I said, you keep your arm straight. You want your shoulder almost brushing your ear. 
And the goal of the distribution is to have it skip right in front of your defender. So that's the easiest ball for them to take. You don't want to have it bouncing to them the whole way. It really should just be one skip and then they can collect it and turn. So this is what it's going to look like when it's all put together. And also focus on your plant foot, your left foot, is what you're going to want to flex. So you're throwing it and you're following through on your plant foot. So this is what it looks like. If this hole is our target, this is what it should look like. Okay, so the last form of distribution we're going over is going to be the punt. Now when you get to a higher level, you're going to be expecting to hit a side volley. But for people who are just beginning and for younger kids, this is just going to be the technique that you want to use just to get over the first line, hopefully be able to get to midfield and just help relieve some pressure for your team. So to start, what you don't want to do is you don't want to use the same hand that you're using the same foot to kick with. So if I'm kicking with my right, I don't want to be dropping with my right hand. Because this way, when you drop it, it's too close into your body and you're going to get jammed up and you'll find a lot of times you're going to be hitting with the outside of your foot. It's going to be shanking wide left, wide right. You want to drop it with your left hand if you're right footed. That way you can put it out in front of you and you can wrap your foot around the ball. The second thing you want to watch out for is you don't want to be popping the ball up when you are about to hit it. You want to just drop it straight to the ground. Because the issue is, is when you pop it up, it's going to change your release every time. There's, it's impossible to put the ball at the same distance every single time so you can build the same rhythm for your kicking motion. Where if you just drop it, it's going to be the same every time, which will make it a lot easier to start making it a habit of how you hit the ball. And thirdly, you just want to keep your eye on the ball. You don't want to start dropping it and as you're hitting it, starting to pick your head up to see where the ball is going. It's going to cause your shoulders to open up a bit to the outside and then that way the ball is going to be going where your shoulders are facing. So you just watch the ball after you swing through. I like to look at the ground for an extra just half second just to remind me not to look up early. It's not going to change where the ball is going if you're looking at the ground first, if you're looking up at it, say like a second after you hit it. So what it will look like is you just do a run up, you're going to play it with your left and just follow through to your right. Okay, so for our next topic is we're going over communication, which is vital for all goalkeepers to master. So the two points you really want to be is you want to be loud and precise. You want to make sure that everybody on the field can hear you. That way there's no chance that your defenders don't understand or can't hear what you're saying. And you also want to be precise. You want to give specific directions at all times. So you never want to just say, man left. You got to call someone's name. You got to say, John, man left. That way John knows to slide left and everybody else knows that that's not meant for them and that they're fine in their position. Or you say, John, man coming right. And that way, if a guy's making a run in behind him, he knows that he has to start shifting over to the right. All the time, you need a name with every action you call. And because it's just human nature where if someone just hears man right, you just assume that it's not for you, it's for someone else. But once you put a name on it, they're gonna listen. So it's also vital for goalkeepers to call for the ball when they're coming out to claim it. So if there's a through ball coming in, the second you know that you're gonna go for that ball, you need to call keeper. One, this alerts your defenders to either put a body and shield the attacker that's coming for it, and also if you're coming really high off your line, it will let one of them know, maybe if they're on the left side and you're pushing on the right, to drop back into the goal in case you don't get the ball, they try to chip you from far out, and at least you'll have a defender on the line. So you wanna call a keeper as soon as you know you want the ball, and then on the flip side of the coin, the second you know that a ball is coming in a dangerous area, you don't want to deal with it, call away. You want to call away loud, and just like calling keeper, you want to call it right away. This way your defenders know that that's their ball, they have to win it, they can start focusing on the man with them and what they have to do with the ball. And another thing is, it's always your decision. You see a lot of times keepers will call away and the defender maybe tries to keep shielding it for them, which causes a miscommunication where the keeper comes halfway out, the defender's kind of halfway shielding the ball, and the striker will just come and toe poke it and it's gonna be an easy goal. If you don't want the ball, just keep repeating away. Don't get called out because your defender's calling you out. It's your choice, and once you made your choice, just stick with it, unless you're 100% sure that you can still come get it. Maybe you misread it. But don't let your field players try and call you out. Worst case, ask for the ball back, and then just play it wide. But you don't wanna get stuck in that no man's land where you're halfway coming out, halfway staying. It's only gonna cause trouble. All right, lastly for communication, is you wanna always use specific words for specific actions. So if I want a ball played back to me, I always use home. I say, I say, Tom, home, home, home. 
and then that's, he knows, that means I will pull it back in my feet so then I can play it. You don't want to be switching up so one day at a time I say ho, one time I say ball here, it just creates confusion. And just another example is if I want my defender say someone's dribbling towards them and I don't want him to step because I don't want to get one twoed or I want to give more time for our defenders to come back and just get behind the ball so we can organize in a block of eight or whatever, I'll tell him hold. And whenever I say hold, I don't actually mean for him just to hold there. Hold for me means for him to slowly drop and really just contain, just contain the ball. But if I'm on a new team, I need to make sure, and you guys need to make sure, that your defenders understand what your code words are for certain situations. So if I'm training for the first time with someone or a new team, I'll go up to the defenders and say, hey, you guys, if I want the ball on my feet, I'm gonna call home. If I want you guys to drop off and contain, I'm gonna be saying hold. And if I want it, say away, obviously away is gonna be away. But just for every specific situation, you should have a word that you use for it. And you need to make sure that your defenders know what your code words are, or else it's just gonna cause confusion in the back and it's gonna lead to unnecessary goals. All right, so now for handling, let me keep this super brief, guys, because we got a video breaking all of these techniques down into a lot of detail coming out in a few days. So the first thing for handling is just keep a ready stance. You want your knees bent, balls of your feet, hands forward, your back's leaning forward. You want your body weight always forward. So that way, when you react, you're stepping forward, which is what you always want whenever you're making saves. So balls coming into your chest, you're gonna be using the W technique where your hand placement, the thumb should be touching. It's just gonna be a W like that. You always want your body behind the ball, so the ball staggered here. Always get your whole body behind the ball. And that way, if your hands say you slip a little bit, the ball moves a little more, it's just gonna hit you, and you just pick it back up. Or worst case, you give up a rebound, but it's not going into the goal. So ball's in around your waist. You're just gonna use a basket catch, which really is just getting your hands under the ball. You're gonna have rope into your forearms, and you want your chest to be leaning over it. So that way, when it comes in, it's gonna come from your hands up into your chest. And lastly, just low balls. They come in, just get your body. You just need to put your, want your leg down behind it, hands behind the ball. Again, just get your whole body behind the ball. And that way, if anything happens, it's gonna be deflected out wide instead of into your own goal. Okay, so for diving, this isn't something you're just gonna pick up right away. This takes a lot of practice to where you actually feel comfortable doing it and it becomes just secondhand nature doing the right technique. So if you're in your first few games, don't stress if your diving technique isn't perfect because nobody's technique is gonna be perfect right when they start. And like I said, going in depth in this in a video coming out very shortly here, just give you guys a few pointers right now. Is one, if you're diving to your left, you're always going to want your toe pointing in that direction and attacking forward. You always want to be diving forward whenever possible. You also, with your hand placement, if I'm diving left, my left hand's going to be behind the ball, my right hand's going to be on top, and this way you can just pin it against the ground, use the ground as your third hand, and always you want to land on your hips. You never want to be landing over onto your back, onto your stomach. It's just going to cause injuries and feel really awkward. So just to show you guys what this looks like, just have the ball off to the side. Power step through, put it to the ground, bring your knee up, protect yourself. But like I said, a few days, you guys will have this broken down into detail. All right, so crosses are something that a lot of experienced keepers really struggle with. A lot of people consider it to be the hardest part of being a goalkeeper, just being able to judge the flight of the ball, when to come out, when to stay on your line. And we'll have multiple videos in the future breaking this down. But just a few things. Whenever I'm going over crosses with young keepers or inexperienced keepers, I always ask the question, is it better to be late to a ball or early? And usually I get mixed responses. And the answer is, is it's always better to be late to a cross. Because if you're early, say the ball is up here coming up and I'm early in it, I jump through it, the goal's wide open. Where if you're late, say the ball lands right here and I decide not to go, I'm in between the ball and the goal which isn't always ideal versus say I could come out and claim it, but it's better to at least have the play in front of you so you can maybe get lucky, maybe make a great save. You could still react to a shot and keep it out of your net. So just a few things with crosses, a lot of times you just need to be really decisive, just like through balls. When you see the ball hit, 
and you know you want it, you gotta call keeper right away. That way your defenders know to clear out the space for you. They know to watch out for you coming through traffic. And if you want it away, you gotta call away right away so that they're not worrying about, oh, is my keeper coming? Is he staying? You just, you need to make sure that they feel comfortable in the situation as well. And I'd say for beginners, it's probably better to play it safe on crosses. You don't wanna be too aggressive. They can be pretty difficult. And at least if you're staying, you can try to make a reaction safe. Hopefully your defenders can deal with it. All right, so when you do decide to claim a cross after you call keeper right away, the most important thing is gonna be getting your knee up. When you're coming to claim a cross, you wanna bring your knee up in the direction that attackers are coming from to protect yourself because you're gonna be in a vulnerable position jumping in the air, getting bumped in the air. You want that knee up to protect yourself. You also don't want to get straight under the ball like that because if you're straight under the ball, it's very easy for someone to knock you off balance. You want to wait kind of till the last second where you can still get the highest point, but attack it coming forward. So the ball will be here, you wait, 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 then you come through and you can see on my jump how I left my feet about here and I landed here. You always want to land on two feet as well. But you want to be attacking forward, and that way, if you take some contact, your momentum's gonna give you the edge when they're coming in as well. Okay, so the next topic we're going over is positioning, and for the first thing we're gonna be doing with positioning is gonna be dealing with angles on shots. So the best way, easiest way to explain of how you actually want to deal with angle, especially from shots from the side, is you want to see how much you can cover of your far post while still being confident that you can save anything hit to your near post. So if the ball is lined up right here, I would feel confident right here where all I need is a step and I can save anything over here. And it still takes away a decent amount of angle on the outside where they're really gonna have to bend it into that back post to be able to beat me here. Okay, then once you have the shot starting to move a little bit more central, say this is where I was for this shot out wide, all I'm gonna be taking is about a half step here. Now, I still feel confident that I just need step and a half to cover my near post, and I'm still taking away a lot of this far post right here, where again, they're gonna really need to bend it to have me beat. And you also wanna make sure on these shots, you're not on your line. If you're on your line, one, it gives it too much area for them to score. I look small in the goal right now, versus here, I look a lot bigger. And also, if you're on the line and you dive, if you don't dive forward, there's a good chance that the ball's gonna deflect into the side of your net. And then moving to more centered shots. With the shots in the center, you really just wanna be lined up right with them. If it's anywhere in the main part of the D right here, if the ball's right here, I'm be lined up right with it. If the ball's exactly centered, I wanna be lined up right with it. And if it's a little staggered off to the left, I wanna be right with it. So of course, like I said, you don't wanna be on your line, but you also wanna be careful not coming too far out. So say you come this far out for this shot, there's a chance that, very good chance, that you can get chipped, and it also kills your reaction time. Once that ball's hit, I'm not even gonna be able to process where it is probably until it gets to the PK spot, which doesn't give me a lot of time to react, where if you just take a couple steps back, you're still cutting down the angles, but you also have more time to react to the ball, which is gonna be crucial. All right, so the last thing for position we're gonna be going over is what you need to be doing when the ball is not in your defensive third. I see too many inexperienced and young keepers. Anytime the ball is in the other half, other 18, they like just standing right in the middle here, just on their own 18, and just being a spectator. You never want to be a spectator. You always want to be involved, giving direction. So the ball staggered off to the left. You want to be tracking with the ball all the time, moving to the left. I'm a huge advocate of the sweeper keeper style. A lot of you guys, I know you were ex-defenders. Maybe you want to try out playing in goal. Use that to your advantage. Play high off your line. You've seen the through balls. You know what they look like. You know the tells of when they're opening up their hips, and that means a long ball is coming in. When you're high off your line, where if the ball's in the 18, I'll usually play, I'll play 30, 35 yards off my line. And that way, when the through balls come in, you can quickly cut them out. Because all you really have to be worried about is getting chipped. And it's pretty, I'm not gonna say it's easy to tell when you can get chipped, but you should be able to have a decent understanding of how far you can be, how far your opponents can kick, and how long it takes you to track back. But it is so much easier making a 10 yard run from here, cutting out a through ball, and just kicking it out wide, kicking it wherever, just away from you. 
as opposed to having to drop back into your goal and sit on your line and wait for a 2v1 or a breakaway. Because you really just, you, you want to be a preventer. You don't want to always just be reacting to the game. You want to have a big influence on the game. All right, so the last thing that you need to know is all goalkeepers need to be strong mentally. You need to be resilient. If you decide that you want to play in goal and you want to be a goalkeeper, just accept now. You have to accept it now. You're going to make mistakes that get your team kicked out of tournaments. You're going to make mistakes that ends your season. You're going to have your team angry with you, disappointed. You're going to have your coaches yelling at you for certain decisions. You're going to have fans taunting you. You're going to have your home fans upset with you. It's just going to happen. There's no way to play one of the toughest positions of all sports and not make mistakes. It's just going to happen but what you need to do is you can't dwell on these mistakes and have them shake your confidence you just need to identify what you did wrong and what you need to do differently a great way to do this is maybe find people with more experience than you asking them about certain situations I've been playing for 15 years and I love it anytime I'm training with someone who's in their mid 30s who's been playing for that long I love asking questions certain situations maybe certain habits that I have that I want to break you really just want to learn as much as you can from anyone with more experience and just you need to keep that confidence at all costs if you lose your confidence you're gonna be sunk all right that's the video guys I hope this is able to help out a lot of you newcomers to the position understand it a little better and give you a bit more confidence when you're in the field which is gonna translate to you playing a lot better in the long run also I know a lot of this is pretty basic for a lot of you more advanced players but don't worry we're gonna have a lot more advanced topics drills and all of that coming up very soon just want to start at the fundamentals and build our way up but until next time peace do re mi fa sol la hit is go lu re mi control all them boys from Kansas City where they know we got them tricks we get it how we live it no